If you live stream on your Mac or even record videos using software like Ecamm Live or OBS, uh, or even if you just have meetings for that matter, you might want to stick around to hear about these five little menu bar apps. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech, my name's Alec and today we're going to talk about five little menu bar apps that I use all of the time, uh, specifically when I'm either streaming or recording videos like this and I also have used them quite heavily over the past year or so as we've been all having a lot more Zoom meetings than we did before. <laughs> so um, yeah, these are basically, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, uh, these are the little apps that sit up in the top of your menu bar on your Mac. Uh, there's lots of uh, useful little applications that you can get that are really helpful for just sort of productivity in general and I've probably got around about 30 that set, tend to sit in there um, and that sort of brings me on to my uh, first recommendation really which is a little app called Bartender and what Bartender does is it helps you to basically organize all of the little menu bar apps that you've got in there. So if I flick back to my screen again I'll show you what I mean. Uh, you can see how many apps I've got up at the uh, the top here showing in the menu bar um, and if I just click into Bartender I've actually got a lot more than that uh, but they are in fact um, sort of hidden out of the way so that they're not cluttering up the menu bar especially if you've got a uh, uh, a particular app open that has lots of uh, menu items at the top on the other side uh, then sometimes your uh, menu bar items can sort of disappear off the edge especially if you're on a smaller monitor so having them in this little uh, secondary bar here with uh, bartender is a really uh, sort of useful feature now Bartender itself, if I click on it and uh, show you how it works in the preferences, uh, there is also another little thing to it which has been a uh, an added little bonus which was with, with the uh, last release of uh, the Mac OS, the Mac OS Big Sur, uh, for some reason then when they refreshed the look of the, uh, the, the user interface, uh, they seem to add an extra uh, spacing between all of the menu bar items. So this turned what was already a sort of uh, lack of space in the menu bar it just really compounded the issue because uh, now they were all spaced further apart so one of the options that you do have in um, uh, bartender is to actually revert back to the uh, either the default spacing or you can actually flick to the small spacing or no spacing so you can actually change how far apart those menu bar items are uh, spaced so that in itself is quite a useful feature from, from my point of view, certainly. Uh, and then we've got some other uh, little features that you can have from it in here. You can change the icon for it, from it uh, for example. You can also change the, uh, the behavior of it. So at the moment I have mine set so that uh, when I click on the little icon in the top, uh, then there's this sort of secondary bar. But you could actually also have it so that the, they are still within the main menu bar, but they just collapse out to the other side instead. Now in terms of the uh, layout, uh, you have some flexibility here in, in terms of which bits go where basically, so which little apps you want where and you simply just drag them. So this bit at the top is the sort of main menu bar and then this bit down here is the, uh, uh, the bartender bar. Uh, so here you can see if I drag something in uh, from here and then drag it back into this part, it will change what is in the menu bar. You can also change where any new items, so if you install any new apps, you can either have them to uh, automatically go into the main bar, or you could have them automatically go into the separate uh, bartender <laughs> bar. Uh, so I prefer to have it just going in here because if I've installed something new initially, I probably want to have a look at it and check some of the settings and things like that. So as a default, I have them all go into the first uh, menu bar, and then I can move them into the bartender bar uh, as and when I need to. You can also have some, there's some uh, particular apps that you might want running, but you're just never really interested to see them. And so you can put that into this uh, hidden section down here as well. So there is a hotkey as well. You can sort of program to show the different items. Uh, and so you can have it so that they'll just appear at when you press those hotkeys. I'm not actually using those myself, but there you go. So that is uh, the first one, which is bartender. And uh, before you rush out and go and start looking <laughs> for all of these apps, I've got a little thing that you may be interested uh, in at the end of the video where I'll show you how you can get actually all of these apps and 
over 200 more as part of a very, very cost effective bundle. So I'll be talking about that at the end of the video. Now, the next app that I want to talk about is a uh, another menu bar app. They're all menu bar apps today. And that is one called iStat Menus. And that's actually this thing that I've got along the top. If I flick back to my screen, uh, you can see I've got all of these different uh, menu items at the top. And what that is giving me is it's giving me some uh, system information. Uh, so I'm monitoring my uh, processors, my CPU, uh, my uh, disk space, the amount of RAM being used and the network traffic and so on. And this is useful when you're uh, streaming because it's useful to be able to see what's using up what resources. Also good to be able to see, you know, if you're close to your limit, which <laughs> I certainly am on a number of occasions because I'm running a late, uh, sorry, early late 2013 MacBook Pro. So I'm probably pushing it to the limit a bit with what I'm trying to do with it, with uh, the video production and so on. Uh, so it's good to see where your uh, resources are being taken up. And I've obviously, uh, as I'm just about to, uh, as I am recording, I've shut down a lot of tasks. So you can see that the primary task that's taking up the, uh, the resources here is my Ecamm Live, which is the software that I'm using to make this video in. And interestingly, if you're, uh, or <laughs> you may be interested rather, in uh, the software that I'm using to make this whole video is Ecamm Live. And that allows me to make these videos all on the fly live and record them straight to disk and with all of the sort of scene transitions and things like that. And if you're interested in making these sorts of videos yourself and maybe you've tried OBS and want something a little bit more user-friendly, <laughs> uh, then certainly it would be worth giving Ecamm Live a go. And if you use the link that I'll drop down in the description, but also you can just go to my website, takeonetech.io slash Ecamm, and that'll take you through to uh, the uh, sign up page where you can sign up for a free trial of Ecamm Live. And it certainly made my life a lot easier in making it, all this uh, content. But in any case, let's get back to the uh, uh, video here. And I'm talking about iStat menus. So it's really uh, good. It's obviously fully customizable as well. So I can come down to uh, this little button here to go into the customization. And here again, we've got this uh, space at the top which represents what's going to show up in the menu bar and you can see you've got all of these different sort of classifications of uh, basically system data that you have access to i'm only accessing a fraction of it really but you can have all sorts of things like the uh, fan speeds the temperatures so there's all these sensors that you may not realize are actually built into the uh, the mac uh, so you can monitor, you know, temperatures and things like that. So in the menu bar, I don't have those all displaying, uh, although I do have a couple just to look at my uh, my temperatures in the top there. And then if we come down, we can see all of the uh, all of the different temperatures of all of those sensors. Uh, it's good just to get an idea of, you know, if your machine is overheating or not. Mine looks like it's uh, pretty much getting to there. <laughs> uh, and then we've also got the RAM usage. So once again, if you find that your system is getting slowed down or you're having issues with particular applications, it is just good to be able to see uh, exactly what is using up those system resources. So yeah, iStat menus. I've been using this for, uh, I think about 15 years or so now, basically since I got a Mac and it's been uh, it's been really useful and yeah just good to manage those resources and make sure you're not sort of maxing out on uh, <laughs> on anything so next we come on to number 3 and it's kind of timely really because since we're talking about system resources if you are uh, live streaming, then you're going to want to make sure that you have got all the bandwidth available to you that you need and that there aren't any other little applications and things like that that are actually hogging your resources. So it is a good idea to uh, shut down any applications that you're not using. In fact, I'm going to be doing a live stream tomorrow all about my whole process of how I do my video production uh, from start to finish. And in that, I'll be including a checklist a sort of going live checklist, if you like, of all the things that you need to check before you actually click that button. And it's really as applicable uh, for recording as it is for uh, live streaming, because you don't really want your uh, system resources to be taken up and anything to interrupt your flow. And uh, it's also just as important with meetings, really, so that you don't have any uh, little interruptions pop, pop up. So all that to say, uh, I haven't actually said the name of the app yet. <laughs> uh, but number three then, is whoopsie daisy there we go i'm too trigger happy on my buttons today <laughs> number three is something called one switch and this is a really useful app so if i come back to my desktop 
Let me just get iStat menus out of the way. Uh, one switch is this little thing that sits up here and it is a series of toggles that allow you to switch on and off various things that you have in the Mac system. So there are some things that you can do from other places such as dark mode for example, uh, although why you'd need a switch for that, it should just always be on. <laughs> uh, but then you've got uh, keeping the computer awake. So if you've got a task that you want to have and make sure the computer doesn't go to sleep for, then you can uh, make sure your computer stays awake for that. Uh, you can mute the microphone from in here, activate the screensaver. Again, these are all things that there are other ways to do it. So I tend to have my screensaver set with hot corners. So that's a feature that you can do in the Mac where you just drag your mouse over to a particular corner and it activates an action. So I have that for my screensaver and putting my display to sleep. Um, but then there are various other things. But the reason why I specifically use this one and why it is applicable for uh, live streaming or for recording or for meetings is, um, first of all, there's a little toggle here to hide desktop items. Now, I don't tend to have that much of a messy desktop. I tend to have a habit of having things on my desktop whilst I'm working on them during the day. And then I sort of actually have an automation to clear them all up at the end of the night and uh, and file them. Um, but still, uh, when I'm on a call or something like that, I don't really want to have all of my desktop icons visible. And if I'm doing a screen share, obviously. Oops, excuse me. And I would also not like to uh, have that as well if I'm doing a, a demonstration such as this. So we don't want the desktop cluttered up. Now, as it happens, my icons are on my uh, second monitor. But having this little toggle here to be able to show and hide the, uh, the, the desktop icons is a really good way to just clear up all of the clutter when you're about to do a screen demonstration. Similarly, I have uh, Do Not Disturb. Uh, as I mentioned before, just so that we don't get any unwanted interruptions. But the other one that I use it for is this screen resolution. And basically that allows you to select uh, multiple res screen resolutions and toggle between the two, or rather two, and, and toggle between those two resolutions. And the reason why I find that useful, in fact, if I just bring up uh, system preferences, one second, I should have prepared this really, uh, but you can do this anyway, obviously, in system preferences on a Mac. So you come down to the displays here, and then here you'll see the uh, got my two monitors. So this is my uh, MacBook monitor. So here you can see normally I'm the sort of person that likes to have as much space, as many pixels as possible. So normally I would have mine on this setting, the more space. So everything's really tiny. <laughs> That's how I like to, to have it. Uh, however, when I'm doing these demonstrations, then I don't want it too small on your screen. Uh, hopefully, you know, if you're watching on a computer, it should be visible. And if you're watching on a mobile, then I appreciate maybe a little bit tight to see some of this detail. So I want to make it kind of as big as possible, but still be workable. So I find that this setting is good to give me enough space on the screen to be able to show you what I'm doing uh, without it being too far zoomed in. Well, what this switch here does is it just allows me to toggle between those two resolutions. I'm not actually going to do it now because uh, I don't know quite what's going to happen if I do that on a live. But basically, that is going to just switch me back to my, my preferred viewing resolution. So that's a really good little app to just help me uh, quickly go and toggle those different things on before I start my recordings. So if you are finding this useful, so far and you would like to uh, ask me any questions then do go ahead leave those in the comments and also while you're down there go ahead click that like and subscribe button and turn on notifications incidentally these are my five menu bar apps that i use specifically when i'm doing live streaming or recording uh, but as i say i use about 30 different apps in the uh, menu bar alone and so i'll be doing a different sort of series of these videos where i focus on different use cases some for sort of power users and productivity and things like that and so i'll try and feature all of these other ones that i'm using along the way as well so the next one still on a similar sort of topic really as we've been talking about is number four and that is a app called an app called trip mode. So let me come back to my screen again. And this is this little app up here if I can highlight it. Uh, where's it gone? There we go. The one that looks like a little train. <laughs> and basically this one allows me to uh, have different um, sort of profiles for different tasks that I'm doing. Uh, and so if I come down here at the moment, I've got streaming and what that's doing is it's blocking any network connections from uh, apps that I don't want <laughs> to have access. So at the moment, my Adobe Creative Cloud uh, is not having any access to the uh, Internet. Neither is my ExpressVPN, uh, iCloud. That's a big one that runs in the background that people often don't think about. 
Uh, but you definitely want to turn that off because the last thing you want is to be, you know, trying to do some streaming or recording something and then you have a, a big download that kicks in or iCloud starts syncing something or Dropbox starts syncing something and that takes up all of your bandwidth and gives itself priority over what you're trying to do. So this allows me to basically only allow certain apps. So here I've got Ecamm Live and my Stream Deck and everything else will be blocked from any network communications. And it just means that I'm getting the full bandwidth over the network for uh, my uh, live stream. Now also in here, you can, uh, whoops, if I've just come back into it, you can select different pro uh, profiles. So I have one for when I'm on meetings. So I want obviously things like Zoom and Microsoft Teams to have a priority then. Uh, I also, for some of my work, do some uh, heavy data analysis. So when I'm doing that, I want different applications. And then also for one when I'm uh, tethering on the phone again. I want certain applications like Safari and things like that to have access to the network, but I, again, wouldn't necessarily want uh, my uh, iCloud to start syncing over 4G if I'm in a foreign country especially. So, uh, so yeah, it just means that you can set up these different profiles and split between them. So again, part of my sort of going live checklist that I'll be talking about in the uh, live stream uh, is, uh, is to go through and just toggle these things on and off. So finally, the uh, last one that I want to talk about, which is possibly a little bit of a uh, niche, but it's an app called Presentify. Uh, Presentify, <laughs> bit of a funny uh, accent there on it, but Presentify sits in the top corner here. And this allows me to basically annotate on the screen. So if it's got a little hotkey, uh, Control A, so if I press uh, Control A, then it allows me, I've got this little pointer, you can see this little uh, screen that comes up at the top and it basically allows me to draw on the screen. I can put little arrows on there. I've got a little uh, drawing tool here so I can click on that one and then I can just scribble on things. Or I can put boxes around things and we can just clear it off like that or we can uh, type on it as well. So this is good if you're on, uh, well, if you're doing something like I'm doing and you want to show somebody where it is in the menu bar, for example, then we could just come over here and say, yes, this app is just here in the menu bar. Uh, so it's great for doing demonstrations or if you're on a call with somebody uh, on a you know, Teams meeting, a Zoom meeting, something like that, and you're talking about an app or showing some data or whatever you happen to be doing, then it's a great little way to just annotate those. If you're doing something more complex, then you know it might be a good idea to have a, a Telestrator linked to your uh, Ecamm Live or your OBS. And I'll be doing another whole video on that because that isn't really a menu bar app, but I have a method for doing that where you can use uh, an iPad or a second uh, touch screen to use as a Telestrator. But that's something for another video. When I've uh, made that video, I will be sure to put a link up to it in the top corner. So that was the five apps that I, uh, I use regularly and I sort of recommend. But um, the question now is how much do they all cost? Well, the thing is they are, you know, individually, uh, there's a couple of them that are $9, $5, $20 and all different prices. However, you can actually get them through something called Setup. Now, Setup is basically a, an app in itself that you subscribe to and you get all of these apps and in fact over 200 apps that you can use as part of that subscription. And that means that uh, as well as these apps, there are, I forget the exact balance between how many are menu bar apps and full, full blown apps, but there are a lot of really powerful full blown apps in there as well. And it's just $9.99 a month. Uh, however, if you use the link below, uh, or the link that I've linked to there, takeonetech.io slash set app, then you can get one month free. If you go direct to the website, I think you get a seven day trial. But if you use that link, then you get one month free. And I'd advise getting the month because like I say, there are 200 apps. So you do want to make sure you've given them a fair go to see which ones you want to use. I'm probably out of the 200 using around about 20 or 30 of them. So it's not a case that they're all going to be suitable for you. But if I just come and show you actually what set app looks like, because as I say, it is an app in itself. So you do download it to your, uh, your system. And then basically you have an interface. I should share my screen. It might help you see what I'm seeing. Uh, and here, basically, once you open the app up, so this is the set app app. <laughs> and in here you have, uh, they've sort of grouped them by different things, lifestyle, creativity, developer tools, uh, all these sorts of things. Lots of these apps I've been using actually before 
for years. So there's there's lots of great quality apps, better touch tool. So I haven't actually got that one installed through set app because I already owned it. Uh, and there's there's just loads. So I'd say probably out of all the all the 200, I've probably got about 50 or 60 or, or sort of staples in my workflow really. Uh, so yeah, you just come down here or we can click on all apps. Like I say, they're grouped and you can just look through all of the apps. So over 200 of them. And as I say, if you use that link that I'll put in the description, uh, the way that works is you just get a month uh, for free to try all of the apps out. If you don't like it, there's no commitment. Uh, and it's also, to be honest with you, it's a good way to try some apps out. It may well be that you try some of the apps, see which ones you like, and then you don't actually use the set app uh, subscription, <laughs> but you just have tried the app. And so then you could just maybe go and buy the one that you want or the two that you want or whatever. But as you can see, there's really quite a long, uh, long list of them. And uh, yeah, if I just go to uh, my Explorer, I think this has got, uh, oh, sorry, on this Mac, it will show you these are the ones that I've got so, uh, that I'm personally using so far out of those. In fact, this one here, uh, this sketches one, that's a great app to use if you're using a, a Telestrator, but I'll, I'll talk more about that in that uh, that other video. But it's a, a sketching app, and so you can use it with your um, your iPad on sidecar with your uh, Apple Pencil, green background, Telestrate over the top of your Ecamm Live. But I'll explain that in full detail in another video. So yeah, that was uh, set up. And as I say, if you go to uh, takeonetech.io, which is my website, slash set up, then that just links you through to uh, the um, uh, set up, <laughs> the set up uh, page where you can download the uh, the free trial. Uh, the way that works from an affiliate point of view, just in case you're interested, is if you try it for a month and then sign up after the month, uh, you will have had the free month and then I will get an extra free month added onto my subscription. So that's how it works. And then you can tell all of your friends about it as well. But it's not really about the affiliate link, to be honest. It is something that I use day in, day out. And it is, uh, yeah, it is really uh, a valuable tool. Incidentally, if you are interested in the things that I've been talking about, I've uh, also got my website, obviously, where you can go and you can find links to all of this sort of stuff, my blogs on there, my podcasts and everything like that. So be sure to check that out as well. So that's about all, but I'll just remind you once again, leave any comments down in the description, in the, uh, the comments box below, and uh, also click that like and subscribe button so you get notified whenever I make my next videos about my other menu bar apps, because I've still got about 30 more to get through. <laughs> so that's all for me today. I hope you found that useful. But in the meantime, go and check out some of these other videos coming up right now.